um, the category that we're in for, the, for, for these cell structures, okay, and their layers, all right? So, stratified columnar. Those are those tall rectangular cells. However, for them to be present, because they're a pretty big cell, okay, they're not very prominent in the body, being in two or more layers. So, this is where we find them. We find them in the mammary gland duct, the larynx portion of the male urethra. That's it, okay? So, it is going to be multiple layers. It will look like that they're sitting on top of the cubes, okay? Um, but they're the tall, thin cells. The bottom is going to be more cuboidal-like, but the, it is classified as B, stratified columnar. Their function, protection, and secretion because of the areas where they are found. For example, mammary glands. The only time those should be productive is at the time of birth, okay, and after. So this would not be something that needs to be productive all the time. Um, the pseudostratified. The pseudostratified columnar. This is where we have, where it looks like there's two or more cell layers. Found lining of the nasal cavity, nasal sinuses, auditory tubes, pharynx, trachea, and bronchi. So notice how the cells have gone from where we saw like the simple, for example, all the way at that terminal bronchiole, and then we came up to a bronchiole, and now we're up to the bronchi, okay? Now, here's in that structure, okay, what, what we're looking at. Note that it seems that it looks like there's two or more layers, but it's not, okay? But here's the cool thing. All of the cells are touching that basement membrane, okay? But not all of the cells come up to the apical surface, the top, okay? In some cases, Okay, we're going to see that we have the cilia. Almost, okay, we don't ever say all in science, okay? Most of the time, they are going to have cilia because the job of cilia propel something, okay? So, for example, if we find them in like the, the nose, if we find them in the respiratory system, here's the other thing that's cool. They contain the goblet cells, all right? And goblet cells secrete mucus. That's what they're going to do, which is beneficial in the areas where we find these cells. It's beneficial to have that mucus, well, not always, okay, but under normal conditions. It's beneficial to have the mucus secretion. It's giving protection. If the cilia are present and things get in here that we don't want in there, then, you know, that cilia is whipping along trying to go, nope, not in here, not happening. So, <clears throat> they synthesize, meaning they make and secrete the mucus onto that free surface. They can move 
the mucus because that's what cilia do. Okay, cilia are like the wave that occurs at a um gain. Okay, let's try. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, thank you. So the goal most of the time get those free particles that are trying to get in back out. Okay, so huh. We end up sneezing, we end up coughing, we end up <coughs> doing all that sort of stuff, okay? And that's a lot of the things that are happening with this pseudo-false stratified, false strata, columnar epithelium. The transitional epithelium, the transitional epithelium, just like the name implies, let it transition and this is extremely great for organs especially the bladder okay of the body that need to be able to move so to speak to, to fill up go down fill up go down so we're going to find transitional in the lining of the urinary bladder our ureters and the superior urethra. It's stratified, but it looks like the cells change shape based upon whether you have emptied your bladder, whether it's filling up, and then the urethra, um, the ureters, as they move the fluid into the, the um, bladder. This helps accommodate fluctuations in the volume. As the kidneys go to the waste and urine gets produced, the urine has to move from those kidneys into the ureters, into the bladder for storage until it can leave the body. And this allows it to do this. Now, one other thing that the transitional epithelium does because it is epithelium and the and based upon what epithelium can do urine do you happen to know what the pH of urine might be is it acidic or basic it's acidic okay and the epithelia helps protect against that acidity so that's a good thing, all right, in this structure. So transitional epithelium. If we take a peek at what we have existing, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, Stratified columnar, pseudo oh, there's a D missing, pseudo stratified, transitional. And now looking at what they can do. And John, I think this is where you were wondering about the differences. So if we're looking at each one, okay, and then what we need it to do. Diffusion, filtration, secretion absorption, protection, movement of the mucus, stretching, and then the little miscellaneous. This is where each one plays their part. So if we think about diffusion, that's that simple squamous. And simple squamous is great for that. And you're going to see that for the rest of the course, whether here or in part two. Is it John? Uh, it was more like the previous eight slides were like, I had a ton of information on them. And this is more condensed. Mm -hmm. uh, and just for like studying for the exam, like, would you say that like, 
we could kind of have this cursory knowledge based upon this slide, or do we need to have all that information with like all locations like memorized? No. This would be now those previous slides because they're those slides are letting you know every single area that they could be found. Right. Okay. What I want you to know, okay, be able to like tell me the difference between simple versus stratified versus pseudo stratified. All right. Then be able to say or identify squamous versus cuboidal versus columnar versus the pseudostratified columnar. Okay. But if you were asked a question, something like in epithelia, okay, what cell is best for the function of diffusion? I would want you to be able to tell me that simple squamous, okay? But I wouldn't want you to have to tell me every single area of the body where it's located, okay? Um, uh, no, okay? Um, I want you to be familiar with layers, types, structures, what they're best for, okay? So if you were looking at simple squamous, the best thing it's good for, diffusion, <laughs> the other thing that's kind of unique to simple squamous is the fact of it being in the kidneys right there. But there's also something kind of unique about the simple cuboidal, okay? Um, but I'm not going to get that deep into it. Now, filtration, secretion, secretion, absorption, know that it could be those three. But I would not be asking, is it part of the kidney tubules? Is it part of a gland? Is it part of an intestine or whatever? I would want you to know um, what is meant by cilia versus a microvilli. What's the difference? And based on like that first exam, the microvilli are much bigger than the cilia. They're bigger. They're finger-like. Absorption. Yeah. Do microvilli move? No. Cilia move because their goal propels something. Okay. Um, be familiar with like that goblet cell and and the importance of the goblet cell because it's not found everywhere, okay, that goblet, say, uh, goblet, sound, goblet cell, okay, is going to be found where we need the production of mucus, like along the respiratory tracts, okay, the digestive tract, all right? So I would not expect you to be able to tell me, like, um, under the do, 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 stratified squamous epithelium, protection against friction and abrasion. I don't want you to have to be throat, epiglottis, larynx, esophagus, anus, vagina, blah, blah. No. But if you were to be asked, which of these cell types is good against abrasion, okay, you would want to say, okay, well, the answer is simple squamous epithelium, uh, stratified squamous epithelium is there. Put that answer. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so transitional, that one's unique. It's only with the urinary system. So anything transitional, always equate that with the urinary system. All right, so if you have a question on a test that's dealing with the transitional, if there's an answer with the urinary system in it, then you know that's the answer. 
ureters, bladder, urethra, that sort of thing. All right.